I've been putting this one off for a while, but we're going to talk about descriptors in Python, a fairly advanced topic, and I'm going to go over all of the details, well, all the details that I know, <laughs> and then show a practical example of how you might write your own descriptor. Uh, but anyway, let's jump into it. We're also going to be covering what a data and non-data descriptor is and why descriptors are kind of magic and I tend to avoid them unless absolutely necessary. Uh, but anyway, let's get started. Okay, so the whole point of descriptors is to make uh, variable lookups in classes magical and different. Uh, let me show you a quick example of a descriptor and then I'll explain what's going on and uh, why it's sort of magical. So we are going to define a class. This is going to be our descriptor class and it is going to have, um, I guess, an init, which is going to be super helpful. Uh, we'll just do this. And it's going to define this special method called double under get. There are also two other, well, three other descriptor methods that we'll talk about. One of them is double under set. The other is double under delete. Not to be confused with double under del, which is a whole different thing. Uh, and there's also set name. This is another uh, descriptor method here. But let's start with get. Uh, get has a signature that looks like this. It takes an instance and an optional owner and it returns a value. Now there's actually two ways that this gets called. We'll go over those in a second. Uh, but for now, let's just print uh, get and we're gonna return the value five. And this allows us to customize how an object, or how an attribute is looked up on a class or an instance. Uh, <laughs> class or instance is, is also important there because many people forget about uh, descriptors on classes, but we'll get to that in a second. Okay, so in this case, I've defined a class C and it has an attribute D, which is actually an instance of this descriptor class here. Now, if you, we were to make a C and print its D attribute, normally you would think, oh, this is just gonna look up you know, a normal class attribute. You know, there's, no, there's no shenanigans here. But actually what this does is it first tries to find a non-data descriptor uh, that exists here, and it will call the get method uh, and pass it along the instance and the optional owner. We'll talk about the optional owner in a second. And then if that is a descriptor, it will replace this value for this attribute access. So it's a way to put magic into attribute access. So if we run this, you'll see that, you know, we constructed our descriptor, we called get, uh, and we were able to return the value five. Now, uh, I mentioned explicitly and specifically that this is a non-data descriptor. That is, it only has a double under get method. If you were to add a set or delete method, that turns this into a data descriptor, and that changes the order that things happen. The order that things happen is first, it tries non-data descriptors. Uh, then second, it tries uh, double under dict of whatever the name is. Um, you know, double interdict is where normal objects store their attribute storage. So for instance, if we had class Q and we made a Q instance and we did Q.x equals one, uh, if we look at Q.double underdict, you'll see that there's a dictionary that's backing the class. And so that's the second thing that it tries to look at. Uh, the third thing that it tries to look at is assuming that's not in self.double interdict, it's going to look at data descriptors. Uh, oh, actually, I have this in I have this in the wrong order. <laughs> Sorry. It's going to look at data descriptors first, then it's going to look at self.dict, then it's going to look at non-data descriptors. Uh, so if we, for instance, in this init here, had set self.doubleunderdict d equal to 9, uh, this is going to subvert our... Uh, oops, that's the wrong place. This init... <laughs> right. Uh... If we were to set, uh, and I usually like to put those class attributes first, if we were to set the dictionary variable D to nine, this is gonna bypass our non-data descriptor lookup. So this should print nine here, and you'll see that we don't call double and get at all. Um, so attribute access is a little bit more complicated than this. Uh, I'm also leaving out slots and there's other, I guess slots is the only other magic, maybe. Oh, there's get adder and get attribute. <laughs> We're leaving out a little bit of magic here. We're just going to talk about descriptors today. Uh, but typically, this is the uh, the hierarchy that you have to worry about here. 
Now, the astute observer might notice, huh, yeah, Python has to do a lot of work whenever you access an attribute. It has to check these descriptors all the all the time. And yeah, that's um, that's one of the many reasons why Python is slow. OK, so we've shown a non-data descriptor, uh, which just has double under get. This is used for sort of read-only attributes. Um, and actually, funny thing about uh, descriptors is methods themselves are also descriptors. <laughs> So if we look at, uh, oops, let's run this interactively. If we look at C dot, uh, what was the method? Oh, we have init, so we can use that. So C dot init function, this function object is itself also a descriptor. And so when you construct an object and then look at init, this is going to call double under get, and that's how we get back a bound method versus, you know, originally we just had a plain function here. And this is how self is sort of magically injected into method functions. So that kind of kind of ties all that together. And self self is a little less magical at the expense of making attribute lookup way more complicated. Um, but yeah, that's <laughs> met, uh, functions. Methods are actually just descriptors, and you could call them manually. So if you were to make a C instance here, and we were to get our method as C dot double under init dot double under get C and then type C. This will give us our bound method. And then we can call that bound method uh, without having to pass any arguments. Um, now, <laughs> it's actually mutated this uh, object here, but uh, we didn't have to pass self here. So self was sort of magically injected by this double under get here. Anyway, a little little tangent on methods there. So I wanted to also talk about uh, data descriptors. Data descriptors are those that set, uh, <laughs> that define double under set or double under delete. This would allow you to make something that uh, is not just read only, but could also receive values or even you know, make an absence of a value via delete. And let me show you the signature of those, def set self inst uh, val. And so this is gonna take whatever class instance that it's being assigned to, and the value that's being assigned. So if we did print dot set with val, and uh, you might store this somehow on this instance by doing like, I don't know, inst dot uh, secret val equals val. Um, but that's our setter. And we can also define a deleter. I've never actually defined a deleter. <laughs> But this is the signature that it uses. Uh, it just takes the instance, and so we might say del inst dot secret val, uh, and then maybe we'll also define our getter as returning inst dot secret val. Now, the secret val is not great. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. Well, spoilers, we'll get to that in a second, uh, because this means that if we had two uh, descriptors that use this D class, they would clobber each other. They would always assign to the same value here, which is a bit of a problem. Uh, but now you'll see that because we have defined set and delete, it's always going to bypass dict. It's going to ignore this value in here, and it's going to uh, call our descriptor each time. So we should, even though before we were saying nine here, we should see, oh, actually, we won't see a value at all. Um, let's actually just do, let's do this. That way we have a default value there. Okay, so if we run this now, you'll see that it's still going to call double under get, and we're going to get five. But now if we make one of these things, we can set the value on it. Uh, C.D equals 10. And if we now access C.D, you'll see that we've gone through our custom descriptor and we've modified the value that's here. And so you might use this for like validation or uh, ORM magic often uses these, uh, but that's, that's sort of the set there. Um, and again, just to reiterate, the difference between a data descriptor and a non-data descriptor is whether it defines either a setter or a deleter. Now, the last thing that I haven't shown about descriptors is this set name part. Uh, this is relatively new. I don't remember when it got added. Um, but this is a way to hint the name of the attribute that this descriptor is being assigned to. And it gets called automatically when classes are defined. And this will take a parameter called owner and the name that it's going to get assigned to. So you could actually say, like, um, you, could, you could record the name of this thing that's being used. So if you said self dot um, d name equals name, and then if you wanted to set the attribute based on that, you could do, like, 
sat at her inst. Uh, maybe it starts with an underscore self dot d name uh, equals val. Oops. Uh, oh, set at her. So it's a function call. Yeah. Oops. And then maybe our delete is del adder inst and then self dot d name. And then our retriever is get adder inst self dot d name. That way we're, you know, we're sort of, we're sort of magically storing uh, our attribute, but it's also stored in an underscore name. This would allow you to access the value directly, but also do whatever validation you would want to do here. So if we show this again, uh, and, oh, well, it actually fails because we don't end up with a default value. So maybe we should uh, add a default value here, I'm sure. Okay, so we have our C instance. Oh, we have our C instance. And if we do C.D equals 10, uh, you'll see that there's now a C dot underscore D and it has sort of magically done that for us. Um, the actual set name call happens when the class gets defined. So if we were to comment this out here and print set name, that way we know it gets called. Uh, no instance was constructed here, although we got our, our set name there. I guess the I guess the D instance was constructed, so we still have that there. Um, and so this is a nice way to hint about what the attribute name is actually called, uh, which was a problem previously with descriptors because you didn't, you didn't, you didn't know what yourself was called. So it's really difficult to you know, generate a uh, database on that. Unless you were a decorator descriptor, which if you've worked with property before, property itself is a decorator descriptor. So if we did property def f uh, self, no return 9001. So property here is a decorator. It takes in this function and it returns back a descriptor. So if we were to print, you know, actually we'll just run this interactively. C equals this. So if we look at C.D, it's going to call, well, oops, sorry, C.F. Uh, it's going to call that function and return the value. And the way it works is C.F is a property object and C.F you guessed it, is a descriptor. So it has this uh, this double under get here. And again, you could construct one of these, uh, you, you could call this separately and get sort of a bound descriptor and then show the results from that. So that's how it can call the function without having parentheses here. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to show, what was it? Um, oh, I wanted to talk about uh, descriptors on classes versus uh, descriptors on instances. Uh, so you'll notice here that we have uh, instance and owner, and owner is an optional parameter. Honestly, I think this parameter is useless. I don't know that I've ever seen this actually have a use, uh, but there are two different ways that the runtime will call this. Uh, the first is if you're calling this on a class, you will get instance uh, being that class, and owner will be none. And the other is if you're calling this on an instance. And in that case, inst will be your uh, you know, C object, uh, your instance of, of a thing. And owner will be the, the type. Um, again, I've never really seen this be useful. Uh, inst is usually what you care about. And often what I've seen uh, as a way to define this nicely is to return back the bound descriptor in the case where it's not called in an instance. So typically what you'll see in descriptor code is if owner is none, return self, which uh, is just a convention. <laughs> I actually don't know what setters and deleters do on those. My guess is that inst will be the class similar to how getters work. Um, I guess we could just show that real quickly. Let's see. Uh, C.D equals two. Uh, oh. We need to run the script. C dot D equals two. Uh, okay, I guess descriptor protocol does not apply to classes. You could make a meta class which has a descriptor and then it would call, but <sighs> I guess if you're learning about descriptors, perhaps you're already down the rabbit hole. Okay, anyway, that's, that's, uh, that's descriptors. It's a way to customize attribute lookup in Python. There are two types of descriptors. There's data descriptors, which only define get. Uh, they are looked up before double underdict, or sorry, 
Data descriptors, which define setters or deleters, those are looked at before double interdict, and then non-data descriptors, which only define double under git, uh, which can be shadowed by dict. Uh, now I wanted to show you a quick example, and I'm, I'm gonna show you a non-data descriptor example that uses this behavior to make a cached property. Uh, I've actually showed this in other videos before, so we're gonna write this a little quickly. Um, but a cache property is like a property, but it's only gonna be called once, and then afterwards it's always going to be skipped. Uh, so it is going to be a decorator, so we're gonna take in some function here. Um, self.fn equals fn. Uh, we're also gonna get our name, so we're gonna define that set name callback. Uh, we're gonna default it to function.name. Uh, before this set name callback happens, you used to be able to just do the, or you would just do this directly and sometimes it would be wrong. So that's why set name came along. Set name, self owner name. We don't really care about the owner here because it's just the class, but self.name is equal to name. We're gonna define just the getter here. Uh, uh, inst owner equals none. Again, if, inst, if owner is none, we're gonna return self, just uh, that convention. And then we want to call this function uh, and cache its value. So we can do that by doing inst.doubleInterdict. Uh, again, we're trying to bypass future calls to this uh, by assigning to this inst.doubleInterdict self.name equals self.function can't remember whether we have to actually pass in the instance to this. I think we do. Uh, I guess if we were being if we we're being very specific, we would do self dot function dot double under get uh, inst uh, owner. <laughs> that way we retrieve the descriptor of this function. I don't think we need to do this though, so I think I'm just gonna do self dot inst. Um, and then return ret, uh, and that way if we make a class and we make a cached property, uh, named f, print computing f, and return 9001, assuming I've written this all out properly. Uh, q equals q, and then q dot f. Uh, so you can see that it's computed the value the first time, but afterwards it's stored in q dot double interdict, so it bypasses our descriptor. And so this is uh, a way to write an efficient caching um, method, or uh, yeah, a efficient caching prop property. Now there's functools.cache property, which does this better, and there's uh, also many PyPI implementations of this as well if you need, you know, blocking and all the other fancy thread safety, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but this is just like a quick example of a data descriptor that's also a decorator. <laughs> um, but yeah. Let me make sure. Let me make sure that this actually works as well, because this would this would continue to go through the actual descriptor protocol, even though it's a little unnecessary. Uh, q equals q, q dot f. Yeah. So this is essentially uh, what's happening behind the scenes there, where we're retrieving the uh, the bound. We're retrieving the bound method of the function that was passed in as the decorator. We're retrieving this method. Uh, but it's not super necessary because you can kind of, you can bypass that and just pass in self directly. Uh, but anyway, that's descriptors. Uh, and another reason why Python is slow. Uh, hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below, reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.